The lowest point in the state of Louisiana is the city of New Orleans, with an elevation of negative eight feet, making the NO negative two meters below sea level. Some would say that New Orleans is a disaster waiting to happen. This would be proven to be true as Hurricane Katrina will rock the city. Despite being below sea level, New Orleans will be former home of the Super Fair, Pontchartrain Beach, and Six Flags. The NO would even host the World's Fair in 1984. Known for being some of the biggest tourist attractions in the States, the NO would birth some of the most notorious street figures in America. Terrence Gangster Williams, the half-brother of Brian Baby Williams, co-founder of CMR Cash Money Records, is one of the most notable street figures to ever step foot out of the city of New Orleans. Gangster's mother would move to the CJP Magnolia Projects while he was doing a juvenile bid. Taking advice from his big dog, Elvin Nelson, aka Killer Stone, who gave Terrence the name Lil Gangster, he would take probation and be released to the streets. It wouldn't be long before Giggity would link with Sterling, Dooney, and Mosquito. They would run with the moniker, The Hot Boys. Dooney would catch a jose, and Sterling and Mosquito would ultimately lose their lives to the streets, leaving Gangster as the last man standing. March 6, 1998, Terrence Williams, aka Gangster, would catch a fed case. His reign as Terrence Gangster Williams, the original hot boy, would end. Terrence would have one hell of a run that went from touring with Cash Money Records before they blew being one of the most known dudes in the city, racking up cars, clothes, money, hoes, and leaving a trail of his ops, blood to follow. Gangsta, no stranger to the street beef, would travel to other cities such as DC, Carolina, Chicago, and New York. He would just hop on the Greyhound and go. Terrence's mindset at the time was you never know when you will go to jail. With this in mind, Gangsta would live life to the fullest, copying whips that a person his age could only dream to imagine. The lavish lifestyle would not come without cost, as Giggity will lose two of his best friends to street beef. Sterling Lofton, aka Hot Boy Sterling, will lose his life in the Iberville. John Bryant, aka Mosquito, will lose his life in the CP3 Calio Project. Although Gangster will have two cribs of his own, one in the 17th and one in the 13th, his safe haven would be his mom's two bedroom apartment in the Wild Magnolia. If you are a fan of Giggity's channel, you would know this to be facts, as he has said it multiple times on his platform. The Noia was known for bumping at 11.5 on Wild Willa. Gangsta's name was ringing. Already doing good, Giggity would come up with a new connect. Giggity's co-defendant would be involved with giving the Latino connect the game to get out of jail. The connect would chop it up with Red, letting Red know that they still had dog food. Red would take them up on their offer, ensuring them that the 11-5 would move. Terrence Williams, aka Gangster, who was the man on Wild Will at the time, would co-sign that the boy was that torture. Giggity, who didn't drink, smoke, or get high, would inquire about where the dope was coming from. Upon learning that the dog food was coming from NY, Gangster wouldn't hesitate to be on his way to the Big Apple. This would be without an invite or even meeting the connect. This wouldn't be Gangsta's first time going to New York. Gangsta, whom always felt that he was a tough guy, would make this move with no fear at all in his mind. He would never imagine himself being murked. The furthest his mind would take him would be being arrested and serving time in Angola. Never the feds. Unbeknownst to Gangsta, his phone would be on the wire. Giggity's conversation plotting on the connect would be caught on the tap. One humid spring night in New Orleans in the month of March, Giggity would be at his mother's apartment. Knowing that his brother had gas on his chest, Gangster would send him to cop his favorite cinnamon rolls from Tasty Donuts. Not able to crash in the second bedroom because of his brother and his brother's girl, Gangster would stretch out in his mom's bed. Gangster's brothers was taking extremely too long to return with the cinnamon rolls and Gangster would end up crashing, later awaking at around 5 a.m. to find a bag of cinnamon rolls laying next to him. Terrence would take one bite of a cinnamon roll and before he could fully doze off again, there would be a knock at the door. That knock at the door would be the FBI. 
gangster confused will believe that the feds were for his brother, as most of the arrests for gangster were on murder charges that wouldn't involve the feds. Peeping out of the window, gangster would see the FBI tactical unit fully equipped with tactical shields and tactical firearms. Gangster, who would be wearing a cash money big timers t-shirt and Jabor jeans at the time, would slip on his wreaths. The federal agents would apprehend Gangster and direct him to drop to his knees and put both hands behind his head. Super excited about the arrest, one of the agents would celebrate. We got Gangster, we got Gangster. Questions from the agents would ensue. Gangster would sarcastic tell them to do their jobs. In other words, don't ask me shit. If guns are there, find them yourself. Being so excited about the arrest, the feds would overlook a few ounces of dog food that Gangster had stashed inside one of his mother's church dresses. Gangster, who was only copping like six ounces a boy at the time, would be hit with the leader role of a criminal enterprise charge. This charge is normally reserved for kingpins like Big Meech and Free Ray Rick Ross, who would both have the same charges. There would be eight co-defendants on Gangster's case, one of which who just simply got caught up on the wiretap. Gangster would later find out that the feds slapped him with the charge intending to take down Brian Williams, a.k.a. Birdman. Out of the eight co-defendants on Gangster's case, two of them were women. They would be charged with conspiracy to commit armed robbery. Out of the two, one would go to trial and get found guilty. She would be sentenced to five years. The other would receive two and a half years. All eight co-defendants would plead out. Gangster would ultimately be convicted himself. With no release dates in sight, this would seem to be the end of Terrence Gangster Williams. Serving a life sentence, Gangster would be jost by Baby and Slim of Cash Money Records his entire bid. With the streets not expecting Gangster to ever see the light of day, Giggity would resurface on the internet. Gangster's first video on his platform would be June 6, 2022. Terrence Gangster Williams would blow up on the internet, sharing stories about his life and time in the streets, as well as the pen. Gangster would go on to start a nonprofit aimed at educating or protecting the youth. Not all would be peaches and cream, as Gangster would go back and forth with former ops and nemesis from the streets. Terrence would not let this get out of hand, as he would keep it on the internet. Gangster would also entertain a back and forth with Boosie, the internet super stepper and hot girl major, the makeup wearing comedian from BR. Gangster will go on to be featured on multiple platforms on the internet. Gangster would use the internet to jumpstart his ultimate goal, which is to break into the movie industry. One of Terrence Gangster Williams' most notable quotes is, I don't want no trouble, but if a fire starts, I will put it out.